Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to this Pass Insights BI edition video. My name is Katrine Wilhelmsen or Katherine Wilhelmsen and I work as a senior BI consultant in a Norwegian company called Inmeta. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of a feature in Azure Data Factory called Data Flows. Now, a quick note that as I'm recording this video, Dataflows is still in preview. And that means that once you start digging into this yourself, things might look a little bit different than what you see in my screenshots and demos. That just means that the Azure Data Factory team has been busy releasing a ton of cool new features. So just keep that in mind. Let's start with a little overview of Azure Data Factory. Azure Data Factory is a hybrid data integration service in the cloud. In Azure Data Factory, you create pipelines. Pipelines are just different activities grouped together to perform a task. And this could be ingesting or copying data from a source to a destination. And you can optionally do different transformations along the way. This allows you to create your own ETL or ELT workflows at scale. Since this is in the cloud, it can connect to a ton of cloud sources, but also on-premises sources if needed. When Azure Data Factory was first released, it was kind of branded as SQL Server Integration Services or SSIS in the cloud, which to be fair, it wasn't really accurate back then, but now with the V2 version of Azure Data Factory and the new data flow transformations, it's becoming more and more like SSIS. And one of these Azure Data Factory pipelines can look something like this. And you can see that we have all of these different activities that are working together and you can have different branches. So you can have success branches on failure branches and a lot of these control flow capabilities that you can probably recognize from SSIS if you've worked with that previously. In this video, we're going to focus on this one activity called the data flow activity. Azure Data Factory data flows allow you to do data transformation at scale. And it all runs on Azure Databricks behind the scenes. So you don't really need to know any code, any Scala or anything like that. It's all visual in the editor and the browser, giving you a no code experience. This makes it very easy to start building your own data flows and data transformations. And a data flow can look something like this. Now, instead of digging into the screenshot, we're going to switch over to my browser and I'm going to walk you through how this looks in the actual interface. Inside the Azure Data Factory portal, I can now see all the pipelines, data sets and data flows. I don't have any data flows yet, but I have already prepared my pipeline called load movies and my data sets. So inside of this pipeline, I want to grab all the data from the ratings file and the titles file, join that together and load it into the table called movies. And to do that, I need a data flow. So I grab this data flow activity onto the interface and it's going to ask me if I want to use an existing data flow, but I don't have any. So I choose create new data flow. Once I add my first data flow, it's going to guide me through this experience. So it says start by adding source to data flow, which makes sense. When I click on source, it's going to provide some more tooltips. It's going to tell me that the left side of the node shows the type of transformation. And that refers to this little icon here. And then that the right side is going to show the name and the description of the data stream. It tells me that I can click on the node to configure, meaning configuring in this pane down here, or right click to see more actions. And I can also click on this little plus sign to add a new branch or a transformation. So I start by choosing the title. And then I go in and define the schema. So I've already defined my schema in the data set. But since the data set is just a text file, all the types default to string. So I change these into the types that I think are appropriate. Once I have that done, I can go ahead and add a new source. This time the ratings. 
I define the schema here as well. And now I have my two sources. Now I want to go ahead and add a filter to my titles. When we define the schema, you may have noticed this column called is adult. My data set contains adult movies, but I don't want any of those in my demo data set. So I want to filter those out and I only want to keep the movies. In here in the column type, it also contains TV series, TV episodes, and so on. So I want to filter out so I only grab the movies. So when I click on the plus sign, I can see all the different transformations that I can do. Things like join, conditional split, derive columns, and so on. And you can see on the right side that I have this little tooltip pop up showing me what this transformation does. So I scroll down to filter. And then I click on this filter and that is going to show me this visual expression builder. Now down here, I have not turned on debug mode yet. So I'm going to just hide this little preview pane. To add my filter, I can go to my input pane and choose the columns that I want to filter on. So I first click on is adult. I want to make sure that this is set to false. Then I want to add my second filter in here, which is on type. And then I can save and finish. Now I want to go ahead and join title and ratings. So I click on the plus sign again and I click on join. We can see that the left stream has already been selected and I can choose the rating stream. I want to make sure that this is an inner join. I only want to get the movies that have been rated in this demo data set. I choose the columns that I want to join on. And then finally, we go ahead and we add this to our sync. We select the table called movies. And in here, you want to make sure that you choose the appropriate save policy. In my case, I've set this to overwrite. That means that I'm dropping and creating the table every time I run this data flow. You might not want to do that. So you may want to choose append instead. Under mapping, I'm going to disable auto mapping. This is because I want to make some changes to the columns. So I want to go ahead and remove a few columns and rename others. Now we can go ahead and save this data flow. It's saved and we can go back to the pipeline. And now we can go ahead and debug this. So when I click on debug, it's actually going to run the data flow. It's going to drop and create that table and reload all the data. So if I click on debug, it's going to deploy it to the debug environment. This output pane is going to show up and it's now in progress and we wait. And success. We can now switch over to Azure Data Studio to see the results of our data flow. Inside of Data Studio, I can now refresh the tables and see that we have our movies table with the columns that we specified. I can now go ahead and select the top thousand rows from this table. And voila, we have our movies, we have the average rating and the number of votes. That wraps up our Azure Data Factory data flows demo. And I hope that you're as excited as I am about this feature because it's really cool. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to contact me on email, on Twitter, or through my blog. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day.